The new podcast, In the Shadow of Princeton, starts as the matriarch of a prominent Princeton family is found stabbed to death in her locked basement. Investigators look from a serial attacker to her family to Princeton University students. One hot-blooded investigator sees a conspiracy. Is he way off base, or does privilege let you get away with murder? In the Shadow of Princeton is available wherever you get podcasts, or you can binge it ad-free by joining Wondery Plus in the Wondery app, Apple Podcasts, or Spotify. Hey, Eagles fans, this is Chris Franklin from NJ Advanced Media, and welcome to the No Huddle Show podcast, the show where we discuss all things related to the Philadelphia Eagles. Before we begin, I want to remind you that you can read our content on nj.com slash eagles, and be sure to bookmark that to get the latest Eagles news and analysis. Today, I'm once again joined by my No Huddle Show co-host, Bob Brookover and Caden Steele. Well, for the third week in a row, we're recording an episode after a win. This time, the Eagles going to Cincinnati and defeating the Bengals 37-17. Now they get ready to face their former head coach Sunday afternoon when the Jacksonville Jaguars come to town. We've got a lot of stuff to get to, and to do that, we're bringing in Bob and Caden. Guys, how are you? And happy Halloween. Happy Halloween! I'm gonna, I'm gonna go uh, this year masked as a as an old man, uh, and I, I think I can pull this one off. I'm pretty excited about it. I I, I got this white hair going. Uh, I think I think I'm gonna people are really gonna believe it this year. It's it's a really in depth costume there. I, 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 I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> How are you doing, Kate? I have some wrink- I have some wrinkles too that to complete the complete the ensemble. Oh my goodness! Oh. <laughs> Oh, it's gonna be one of those days. <laughs> How you doing, Kate? <laughs> doing good, doing good. Uh, not dressing up as anything uh, this year for Halloween, but it is one of my favorite holidays. Typically, you know, for like movies and stuff. But you know, we'll be at the Novacare for Halloween this year, so uh, not not much dressing up going on. Well, the Eagles are dressing up as a six and two team right now. Uh, they're doing, but it's a pretty dominant win. It looked like that, especially in the second half against the Bengals there. And well, let's get right into it. We're going to our opening drive question. We had, you know, we're going to go away from the game. We're not going to talk as much of the game right away. We're not going to go into preview. We're going to go about, you know, trade deadline. Another holiday coming up, Election Day. And Election Day happens to be the same day as the trade deadline, November 5th. And with it coming up on Tuesday, Bob, I'll start with you. Then I'll go to Caden. Will the Eagles be buyers and get a deal done before the deadline? And if so, what position will they address? You know, all eyes will be on Philadelphia on Election Day and on Trade Day. I mean, everybody's going to be looking. Uh, it's going yeah. to decide that it's going to decide the NFL and the state of the country. Oh gosh! <laughs> um, but but uh, I, I think the Eagles will do something, but I just don't think it's going to be something with the real wow factor. We're going to say, "Wow, they they did that." Uh, you know, last year they got Kevin Byer, who, by the way, is having an excellent season. Um, you know, uh, right now the, 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 he didn't really wasn't able to help the Eagles stop the collapse last year. Uh, but you know, he, I, I do think um, that they're going to do something a, along those kinds of lines. Uh, I'd love to see him still go get an edge rusher. I wrote about it last week. Um, you know, even though they, you know, they. They've, they've recorded some sacks. The, the edge, they've pl- all played better on the edge. I, as I also wrote in that story that Josh Sweat has played, I think, played very well this year, but better than he gets credit for. Uh, Bryce Huff kind of hasn't lived up to expectations, but been playing better. Brandon Graham's playing well well beneath his age, uh, still playing well. Nolan Smith has come on. Jelks Hunt's still a wild card. Uh, you know, he, he's that, that's why I think you have room for, for a guy – the guy I would love to see is a Chase Young. Uh, I'd like wanted him to get him last year. Uh, he ended up in San Francisco and helping the 49ers get to the Super Bowl and had a good Super Bowl. Um, you know, I, 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 but I do think they're going to do something. I don't think they need to really do anything splashy. Their secondary is pretty solid right now. Their linebackers are playing their best football of the year. Um, you know they've they've proven to have depth along the offensive line. If you can add a depth piece, you always I think you always do uh, if you can at the right price. But I just don't see Howie Roseman spending big to do something right now. Uh, you know something really splashy. 
uh, I, you know, I guess that would consist of like a, a Cooper cup. I mean, uh, you can say Jahan Dotson hasn't worked as the, the, the receiver they brought in because he hasn't, he hasn't contributed a whole lot receiving wise, but I mean, part of that is just, you know, he's surrounded by weapons who are, you know, he becomes the third, fourth choice. Even, even with Dallas Goddard going out, Grant Calcaterra has been the choice above him to, you know, to, to, to go to for Jalen Hurts and, and, you know, but besides them, then you also got, you know, you got Barkley, Gainwell's a choice ahead of him, uh, you know, when he's on the field. And then obviously you got AJ and, and, and Devante. Um, so, you know, I, I just think we're, we're going to see something, but it's not going to be something really, really splashy. That's, well, I, the point I was going to make, a splashy would be Cooper Cup, uh, but I don't see anything like that happening. Nice. Okay, Kay, what do you think? Are they going to make a move at the deadline? If so, who? Yeah, um, I do think there's a decent chance, you know, compared to, you know, past years where they got fired and the Robert Quinns of the Worlds where they actually don't make a move this year. And I, which, you know, for a high Roseman, a guy who's aggressive, maybe that would be surprising to a certain degree. But I think there's a decent chance they stand pat. But if they don't stand pat, which I think there is still some chance they make a move, it would probably be for an edge rusher. Um, like Bob mentioned, you look at the roster, uh, you talk you talk about this team and the way they've been playing recently with three straight wins, and they're in the thick of things in the NFC. But when it comes to the playoffs, I think the biggest concern for this team down the down late in the year, if they're in the position, um, when you look at teams like Detroit and other teams in the NFC, is are they going to be able to apply pass you know pass rush on those teams in the playoffs? And right now, um, look, we've seen some stuff from Nolan Smith. Uh, I think it's fair to say at this point that Bryce Huff's been a pretty big disappointment. Uh, Josh Sweat is okay. Like they, they just don't have a legit number one pass rusher. And I don't think you will get that at the deadline, but you might be able to add a veteran. Maybe you call Carolina for JV and Clowney. Look, I, I don't know how that would go over in the city after what happened with the whole Carson Wentz thing back in the playoffs in, um, was it 2019? I, I, I don't know about that from that perspective, but Jadavion Clowney is still a pretty productive player in terms of getting pressures, and he's 31, and he, he will have another year on his contract after this year, so that maybe you won't want to take that on. But a guy like Clowney, I know Zadarius Smith's name's thrown out there, but I'm not sure if you know they'll go get him. His price tag might be a little too rich. Chase Young's another guy that Bob mentioned. So I think pass rush is the most likely option. Uh, in terms of need and what just yeah what they need going forward in the playoffs, I, I think wide receiver Bob mentioned you know is is a point because uh, look I I don't think they'll do it because they already gave up a third round pick for Jahan Dotson but Jahan Dotson it's been two months and I know he's still probably learning the offense and he he wasn't there for training camp but he's been a pretty big disappointment so far as well so those two moves Bryce Huff and Jahan Dotson haven't really worked and those are the two needs where you could you know see them tr- uh, you know argue that they need another pass rusher and a third wide receiver. So maybe that uh, maybe those two positions, but I'm leaning uh, a veteran edge rusher if they add anything. Uh, yeah. You know, for me, I think this might be one of the, uh, it might be a quiet one where we're looking at 4 PM and it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Nothing really happened. It's, it's weird. Cause I think if they do make a move, it might be something like they did back a few years ago and they tried, they acquired Jannard Avery. And it's a guy's like, everybody's like, huh? A guy it's just like a who's a rotational situational pass rusher that you could throw in with these guys. And I know that might hinder the development of JLX Hunt if you do that. But at the same time, I think we all expected him to have a developmental year. So I think if that anything, I think that would be used a little bit. But also you gotta look at the fact that this team doesn't have that uh they gave up already, as you mentioned, getting the third round draft pick. And they don't really have especially with the salaries of AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, Jalen Hurts, guys like that, their salary is going to increase again with, with that cap. I know Cowie's, how he's been able to maneuver stuff and get more space. Those draft picks have become more and more valuable in terms of getting cheap, I hate to say it like this, but cheap labor into this team and to be able to help them out and it helps this team continue to be young at the same time. So I look at that and I'm thinking like, you know what? Yeah, I think you just run with what you have. And you see that. I think I definitely think he was calling. I think he's been calling around. He's yeah, all that as well, too. One of the reasons I like Chase Young is because he's a rental, because he's he's got a he's a one year deal. So I, I you know I, I think we're looking more at rentals here than any anything with beyond this year. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. And they and they got like I think it's like ten point one million in the cap. I, I wonder how much you roll over too. 
in terms of giving them a buffer. So to, to help out with those salaries next year too. But right, Chris, you were, you were around for this. So I, I'll just ask you this. Uh, how much did you think uh, Sue and Linville Joseph added to the Eagles during that Super Bowl year? Did you, they, they were pretty significant players, weren't they? I mean, I wasn't watching on a daily basis like you were, so I don't really remember, but it seemed like they were pretty good. And they, they weren't trade. They were guys that were signed. They were free agents. So it, it's, a, it's a little, a little different, but, but there were guys that were added in the middle of the season. How much did you think they added to this whole thing? Well, they were huge because I remember after they uh, after that Houston Texans game, where the Texans ran rough shot at run defense. That was the big Achilles heel through that time. They really needed some, somebody to help stop the run. He they were able to do that. I think Linval Joseph of all things. I think he had a little bit more of a bigger impact to suit it. Sue did well in terms of his pass rush and everything else, but that was the biggest bug against his team was they couldn't stop the run. So those late season dishes, yeah. I, and, I'm, and I'm trying to think like, all right, who's – you brought up a good point. Like you look around like the – almost like baseball with the uh, – like the Roger Clemens used to do. Like who used to come halfway through the season and who's available is like, yeah, I'm willing to play. And I'm looking like, yeah, I don't think they're doing like every receiver. I don't think they're doing Julio again. I don't think they're doing anything else. I, I don't do see him at another receiver at all. But I do think when you're a really good team and you get guys like those two we just described, I think you know there's already something. I think a pretty good chemistry going with this Eagles team. I do think something like that makes it even. You know, if you get the right guy and you know everybody in the locker room, wow, we're we're serious about this. We we mean business. We're let's go. You know, I think there is a, that element to things too. Yeah, it definitely, it definitely is. It's going to be interesting for sure. We'll, we'll we'll keep an eye on. We'll have all your stuff on NJ.com, and we'll update you on a trade on a trade that line and everything else from there on out. Now, getting back to the field as well too is is not much you can really you, you can't really pick apart what happened this last game against the Bengals, and especially offensively. They really it, it was good to see the explosive plays return still in the passing game. You saw them in the run game for sure with Saquon Barkley ripping off a few runs. They even had a seven minute thirty seven second drive in the fourth quarter that salted it that showed all those pieces of what the offense can do when it's running on all cylinders and just wearing teams down defenses down. The only thing that's really still still talking about now is scoring in the first quarter. It is another week where the Eagles haven't do it. Kate, I'll go to you on this one. Against the Jacksonville Jaguars, is this the week where the Eagles offense score in the first quarter? Yeah. I, I think so. For one, number one reason, I've, the last drive um, uh, against the Bengals, look, they didn't score in the first quarter, but they scored a field goal right after their, you know, the first quarter um, was was over. Um, they went on a 10-play drive. They were in a position to score a touchdown until Tyler Steen, I, I believe, got a holding um, penalty, which, you know, knocked them back on that drive. And then there was the Devontae Smith screen. They lost two yards. So they had some self-inflicting stuff at the end that prevented them from scoring in the first quarter. But it was a good drive. Um, it was a 10-play, 52-yard uh, drive. So I thought it was an encouraging start. And they probably should have scored a touchdown if they didn't, like I said, had self-inflicting mistakes. Which, you know, it's been a problem on some of these drives. But also, I don't think, you know, Jacksonville is going to go on a 17-play, 70-yard drive for over 10 minutes uh like the Bengals do, I don't think they have the offensive uh, talent or the capability um, that that Cincinnati had with Joe Burrow. So from that perspective, and then also I just think this this Eagles offense is getting better. You mentioned it, Chris, the way they played, scoring on their last six drives. Things are starting to click, and I think they're eventually due. And this Jacksonville defense is not very good. Uh, uh, bottom in the league against the overall defense. Um I believe, yeah, they're 29th, and then on on pass defense, they're at the bottom league in 31st. Like, their secondary is not very good. Ronald Darby, a member of the starting Eagles Super Bowl team who's in his 30s now, uh, he's never been, like, a great player, but especially now that he's in his 30s, he's not that great. And the overall secondary with a rookie like Jerry and Jones and the safeties with Andre Sisko and Antonio Johnson are kind of I – mean, just not a great secondary overall. And the fact that the Eagles passing game is starting to get going, the run game starting to get going. Uh, uh, Jacksonville's run defense isn't terrible, but so that's why I think at the beginning of the game, they go on a drive and I could see them really attacking the secondary, kind of setting the tone in this game. Uh, yeah. And I think they're due for some points in the first quarter. Um, and I, I think it's going to happen. I, I think last week, you know, they didn't score in the first quarter, but it was the first encouraging opening drive I've seen this year. 
And what do you think, Bob? What say you? Is, is this finally the week that you think the press box is supposed to go, hey, it finally happened and they, and they scored the first quarter? Well, they're playing the Jacksonville Jaguars, and I can tell you this. The Jaguars have allowed touchdowns. Uh, I, I, I'm just checking one last thing here to, to finalize this, this little thought I have. All right, five of eight drives, five of eight opening drives this year. Uh, the Jaguars have allowed points. And here's my favorite, favorite Jaguars game of the season. You ready? Against Buffalo. Okay. Uh-huh. Here's Buffalo. Here's Buffalo's drives. They went um, touchdown, 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 field goal. <laughs> that's, their, <laughs> that's their first six drives. Uh, it is not a good defense as, uh, he, as Caden noted, they're 29th in points against and 29th in yards allowed. Uh, it's horrible. Uh, they, they, uh, they're just not a good team on defense. They're, they're, they're much, they're much more dangerous offensive team. They're still a pretty good offensive team with Trevor Lawrence, a quarterback, but they're so banged up. And I, and I do think those two things go together when you're, when your offense goes downhill, uh, it also impacts your defense for obvious for obvious reasons. Because a lot of those times you're not staying on the field as an offense very long. Uh, but but let's go more to the point of the, what the Eagles are doing right now. Uh, they they they're really starting to they 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 look like they they've they talked they've talked about it ad nauseum. I'm sure because this this streak isn't just seven games; it's nine games going back to the Arizona game last year. Is the last time they scored in the first quarter, uh, but they've really emphasized that they want to get off to better starts. They did get off to a pretty good one until penalty, uh, holding penalty. Was it a holding penalty? I, I forget what it was. It, was. it started with a two-yard loss to to uh, um, Devontae Smith, and then there was a penalty after that, and that, that made him settle for a field goal on that opening drive. But it just you can just see the offense coming together overall, and, you know, it – it's probably a little bit of a um, outlier that it's not got going in the first quarter. It's certainly there. We've seen we've seen that it. it's there in recent weeks. They've put up twenty eight and thirty seven in the last two weeks. Uh, sooner or later, you got to score in the first quarter. It's funny. I, I forget what I was doing last week, but I was looking at something. And the last time they had a a, a, a stretch this long where they didn't score in the opening quarter. It ended with, I, I believe, with Bubby Brister throwing a touchdown against, oh, God, who were they playing? Somebody, but Bubby. Oh, to Mark Bavaro, the Giants. He threw it to Mark Bavaro. To, to Mark Bavaro? For, oh, okay. And, and that and that ended as the last time they had a streak like this, this long. Uh, and I hadn't thought much about Bubby Brister in, in a long, long time. So um, I think Jalen Hurts is better than Bubby Brister. No matter, no matter, <laughs> no matter what the fans say, uh, and um, that that's a joke. So send your emails to Chris Franklin. Uh, it, it's it's C Franklin at njadvancemedia dot com. Uh, nah, I'm good. I'm getting enough of those right now, especially after one story I had to write. So now nah, I'm good right now. Send, send, send to the ether. I don't know where, but now nah, I'm good. But to, but to answer your question, yes, I can see the Eagles scoring in the first quarter this week. They're back home. Uh, uh, they haven't had a good home performance this year. The f- first. Their first home game, although the first home game they did go on a drive that they should have scored in the first quarter, and they did at least kicked a field goal, um, but they ended up turning it over and downs against the Falcons and that disastrous loss. They haven't really had a really good game at home. They beat the Browns, but not to the satisfaction of their of the sixty thousand something people in the stands. I think we see the Eagles play a really really good game this week and 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 score in the first quarter. Very, very nice. And uh, it's time to run to uh, the run past options section of the show. If it's the first time listening, thank you for coming on. But uh, it's, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read a statement. And if Bob and Caden agree with it, they'll run with it and explain why. If they disagree with it, they'll pass it and they'll give a reason why. This week is going to be completely about Sunday's game against the Jaguars. A team we're likely here will be mathematically eliminated pretty early in the season. With, especially with a two or, four, two or six record in the AFC South of all divisions. So here we go. Bob, I'm going to give you a start right here. The Jacksonville Jaguars game is a trap game because the, the injuries to the receiving core and the Dallas Cowboys coming up on the schedule next. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to pass on that because I, I, 
again, I, as I pointed out earlier, the Jags are really banged up right now. Uh, they just lost one of their best receivers, Christian Kirk, to I think he broke his collarbone. Um, you know, they, they, they're banged up up, up front. Um, and they're just not very good. I give them credit. They played the Packers really tough last week. They were at home for that game. Um, and and the week, you know, they, they've played two pretty good games in a row, actually, because the week before they, they went down 16 nothing early to the Patriots and and then scored, I think, the last 32 points of that game. Uh, that was over in over in England. You know, they, so I, I just don't think that the, the Jags are good enough to hang with the Eagles. I think the Eagles are, are, are feeling – Good right now. I don't think this is the type of team either that that gets caught looking ahead a whole lot. It, the one thing that does come in mind, I guess, is the last. You know, Doug Peters is going to come in, want to come in here. And there's a statue of him in front of the stadium. That it's got to be a pretty cool feeling to come in as a road team. And hey, hey guys, see, I'm a pretty good coach. Uh, Philly, Philly, even even though it was the quarterback that called the play, um, but I'm a pretty good coach. Uh, I won a Super Bowl, so that's got to pre- be a pretty good feeling for Doug Peterson. Um, but I just don't think he has – I don't think he has the weapons to to, to hang with the Eagles this week. Even, the one thing I do go back is that game two years ago when the Eagles did win this – went to the Super Bowl, uh, and, and the Jags did come in and play them tough. They, I think it was, what, 29, 29-21 was the final. Uh, they, they played them tough that day, but I don't think I don't think they have the horses this time to, to hang with the Eagles. And what do you think, Caden? Are you running or passing with that? Yeah, I'm going to pass on that as well. I, I think maybe it's a different story if if I knew Brian Thomas and Gabe Davis were going to play. Like Christian Kirk's already out for the year, but they had those two wide receivers. At least they have some shot because um, Jacksonville's offense hasn't been very good this year, uh, but they still have some weapons. Tink Bigsby you know, is a capable runner. Um, but, yeah, this is, this is a tough matchup. For Jacksonville, surprisingly, they're one of the worst teams in football this year with a two and what two and six record, third in the AFC South. Uh, coming into the year, um, I thought uh, you know they'd be a better team. Uh, honestly, they've been one of the league's biggest disappointments. And Doug Peterson is probably on the hot seat, so maybe from that degree, where this is a game uh, where you know at this stage of the season, Doug's fighting for his job, so maybe they come in hungry and. That gives them an edge, but they just don't have the firepower on offense or defense uh, to keep up with, uh, keep up with Philly. Now, in every game is you know it's considered a trap game, or you know anyone can win. But uh, Jacksonville's going to have a tough time. Uh, the Eagles' defense is playing better, uh, and with the weapons that they only have, which to be honest, at this point in the passing game, if both of those guys out is Evan Ingram and a bunch of guys that probably people have never heard of, like Parker Washington. And guys like that, the Eagles defense should be able to shut them down. And uh, like we talked about already, I think the Eagles offense is going to have a big day against this poor Jacksonville defense. So, yeah, no shot for Jacksonville. And I probably shouldn't say that, but I, I think there's no shot, really. <laughs> I think the only thing they need to really worry about is if they uh, let the Jaguars hang around for at least till halftime. If they, if they struggle or have any type of issues in halftime, I think that's a team that can rally around everything, especially with – Everything's going on with them. They they'll take whatever little piece they can get to try to galvanize them, and Doug will try to do that. That's the only thing I can see happening. But I, yeah, Trey, I'm with you. I agree with you guys on that. Trayvon Walker would be a little bit of a worry, I guess, because he's he's really started really playing like a first round draft pick. But you know, the, 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 and that's a it's another big challenge for Fred Johnson this week. So yeah, there's a lot going on there. And then uh, next, Kate, I'll start with you on this one: running or passing. Tight end Evan Ingram will have either seven catches, a hundred receiving yards, or both. Hmm. I I could see seven catches, uh, but I'll so I'll 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 run with the seven catches and pass on uh, on the a hundred yards. I think for the fact that he's the only real target on this offense um, coming to, into this week potentially. Uh, yeah, I, I really don't know who else they would throw the ball to in this scenario. I, he's going to lead the team in targets, Bob, possibly. He's had a really good year um, for Jacksonville. He's always been a good pass catcher, inconsistent hands at times, and he's not really a blocker. But, you know, he's got 20 catches for 178 yards. He's only played four games, but uh, just generally, you know, he had, he had 10 catches last week for or against Chicago a couple weeks ago for a 102. So he's, he's a capable player, and with him being the only weapon – I think he can get seven catches, but 
I think the 100 yards is going to be difficult. Um, I really don't think Jacksonville is going to be able to stretch the field that much. Uh, I think the Eagles will probably put a lot of attention on Evan Ingram with, you know, with their safeties covering them and Garner Johnson and Blake Ship, even, maybe even Dejean from the nickel. So I think he's going to have a hard time um, going for 100. But, it, I mean, it's possible. We saw Mike Kosecki have a you know, pretty nice game against the Eagles last week for seven catches for 73 yards. They had a hard time guarding him, especially on third down. So uh, that middle of the field, uh, Trevor Lawrence will probably try to target. But I just have a hard time seeing anyone on this Jacksonville team go for 100 yards as a, as a wide receiver or a tight end in this game. I don't think they're going to put up many numbers in general. What are you doing, Bob? Are you running or passing with the fact that you think that Evan Ingram will get either seven catches or 100 receiving yards or both? I, I like Evan Ingram a lot, uh, but I, I don't think he gets either in this game. Uh, his best game this year was in a, in a loss to Chicago. Ten, ten receptions, 102 yards. Uh, last week he had four for 36 and a touchdown. He, he's, he's a really good player, but because – because these other guys are 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 either hurting or down, um, you know, B, you know, Bigsby and Travis Eddy are their two running backs, and they're both banged up. They, they, it sounds like they're both going to play, but uh, you know, they'll, they're both banged up. Uh, yeah, they might go to them a lot, but it also allows the Eagles to maybe cover things a little bit different than they they might otherwise, uh, and, and pay a little bit more attention to them. So I'm I'm going to pass on. On Ingram, 100 yards and seven catches, either or. I don't think he's going to get either. Uh, he'll, he'll do some. He'll, he'll make some plays. It's not enough. All right, cool. And then uh, final final run pass option question I have for you guys, and this goes along with the Jaguars having that two or six record. But we also know we talked about him as well too. We also know very well in the city. Doug Peterson will get another NFL head coaching gig if he's fired by the Jaguars at the end of the season. Bobby, running or passing? Uh, yeah. that's a tough one uh, because all you all, all you need is one sponsor. And I, I'm gonna pass for this reason. Doug's 56. Um, I think there are things he he enjoys outside of life. He didn't come into coaching till till later in life. He you know he did some things as a high school coach. He you know he wasn't one of those guys who who stayed in and. Uh, you know, had to be football for life. Uh, he, he did some other things in his life. And and I don't – I'm not going to say I know Doug that well because I wasn't on the beat when, when Doug was the head coach. I was a columnist for for a, a good part of his time as a head coach for three or four of those years. But I, don't, I, I didn't get to know him all that well. Uh, but I do think he has – I think he has interests – uh, outside of, uh, I know he has a home in Jupiter, Florida that he's bought, and that's apparently his home home for the rest of my life. Home. Uh, I know, I know he loves golfing. I've talked to Merle Reese many times about him golfing with with Doug, and he loves golfing with Doug. Um, uh, so I, I, I'm going to pass because I'm going to say that you know what, Doug might on his own terms just say, you know what, that's enough. I got the ring. I've had success as a NFL head coach. Uh, Let's let's go enjoy life a little bit. So what do you think, Caden? Do you think he'll get another head coaching gig? Uh, Runner pass it if he gets another head coaching gig if he's fired by the Jaguars at the end of the season. Yeah, I'm going to pass as well. Um, I think the last few years in totality have been rough for Doug. You think about Jacksonville um, last season. Going in as when they played the Ravens, um, I can't remember if it was November or December, but they were the number one seed in the AFC. They looked like a really good a good team. It was December 17th of last year. Uh, and, look, they lost, and then they completely, you know, fell apart at the end of last year. Um, and then this year they're 2-6, and six, and just the offense hasn't really panned out. And I think the biggest thing that's going to hurt Doug is uh, whether it's his fault or not, we've seen in two different scenarios. And I think players deserve a lot of blame too, but – uh, Carson Wentz regressed at the end of his time under Doug, and some of that had to do with injuries probably. Uh, but then you're also seeing Trevor Lawrence, a guy that was um, supposed to be, um, you know, a lot of people thought that like the next Andrew Luck and this and that. And look, he hasn't turned out to be that, and he probably deserves you know, a lot of the blame, and maybe those expectations weren't fair. But, you know, that was the re- Doug was supposed to come in and kind of um, help 
turn around Trevor Lawrence, which he did for a period of time, but now Trevor Lawrence has regressed again. So the fact that he's had two young quarterbacks regress underneath him, his offenses haven't been that good. He continually has, you know, brought on Press Taylor, and obviously that his entire offense, the staff hasn't been good enough, but he's been loyal to his guys to a default to some degree, and it, and it hasn't worked. And then, yeah, he, he's been on two teams that have, that have fallen apart. So I, I think – Right now, there's probably a lot of other young coaching candidates out there who are more innovative offensively. And I think Doug's in a weird spot where even if he wants to come back, I'm not sure who's going to want him. Maybe he'll have another opportunity as like an offensive coordinator or a quarterback's coach, but I have serious doubts that he'll ever be a head coach again. All right, cool. I respect all the answers on that. Now we're going to come on to the two-minute drill where each of these guys will have two minutes to answer a question. If they don't finish, they'll hear a whistle that blows, the whistle that they always hate, the whistle that is evil to them. So yeah, we're going to go with that into there. So I'll start with Caden, then go to you, Bob. Caden, two minutes for this. We're, we're near the halfway point of the season. Who is this team's MVP and why? Time starts now. Yeah, uh, the MVP and the statistics won't say he's the MVP, but the MVP of this football team is A.J. Brown. Look, you can make an argument for Saquon and other guys, and it's fair, and I would, I could see that to some degree, for a, a big degree, why people would say that. But without A.J. Brown, this team on offense just didn't look the same uh, against the Saints. They didn't look the same against the Bucs. They didn't look the same against the Falcons. They really struggled. And, look, and as soon as A.J. Brown got back, he started with the big touchdown against the Browns. Uh, I started with the touchdown last week with the Giants to kind of kickstart things. And then uh, just generally, I, this offense just doesn't function the same way without A.J. Brown. And there's a lot of good wide receivers in this league. You can mention the Justin Jeffersons of the world and the Tyreek Hills, and you can make an argument they're better than A.J. Brown, and I'm not going to necessarily disagree, but he might be the most valuable wide receiver in the league to his quarterback. His connection with Jalen Hurts, it just seems when he's in there, Jalen Hurts is more comfortable and – Look, the go ball touchdown against the Giants was so impressive. It got everything uh, kick-started offensively. Um, and, and him coming back from the Browns, even though it wasn't a great offensive performance, you could feel things starting to get in motion again. And, look, he's he's the MVP of this team. He's, he's the best football player on this team. And I, it's so hard to guard him. He opens up so many other things for so many other people. And, uh yeah, I, I think the numbers are started are going to start to reflect itself as the season goes on, and he's a top three player at his position at uh, at a, at a position now that wide receiver you could argue is the most valuable position in football, other than maybe quarterback and left tackle. So AJ Brown's the MVP of this team. Eighteen seconds left. Bravo. Good job. Good job. Bob, it's now you. It's up to you now. Two minutes to ask this qu- the question. Who is the MVP at the halfway point for this team and why? Your time starts now. Yeah, I guess Caden thinks uh, Joel Embiid should be the MVP when he plays like 35 games. Whoa. Jeez. It doesn't really matter if you're available to play, but if you play really <laughs> good in like like half the games, you you can be my MVP. Uh, eh, wrong answer. Uh, yeah, you can make a case for A.J. Brown, and, and Caden just did. And you can make a case for Jalen Hurts. He's, he, I think he's played really, really much better football than he gets credit for. Yes, he's had some rocky games. But the MVP, one other, Saquon Barkley. Uh, he's the one who kick-started the season with three touchdowns and 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 got a, the feel-good, the horrible taste of the end of last season immediately out of the Eagles' mouth by going to Brazil and and, and playing an incredible game. Uh, but let's, let's go over his uh, – his yards from scrimmage, over 100 yards in the first game, over 100 yards in the second game, over 100 yards in the third game, over 100 yards in the fourth game. Or not the only one he didn't have over 100 yards uh, was at Tampa Bay. No, he did not. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Even in Tampa Bay, he had over 100 yards. The only one he didn't was at was at the Cleveland game. I'm sorry. That's the only game he didn't have over 100 yards. Uh, you know, he, he beat the Giants uh, just open his return there. An incredible performance, uh, 176 yards, second highest game of his career. Uh, he, he said when he signed that he felt like a rookie again. He's playing like a rookie again. Last week when it was time to put the game away, guess who got the ball? Saquon Barkley, the MVP of the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, there's, there, there's just no doubt about it. This guy, hands down, MVP. 
you guys are doing a lot better with your clock management. I like it. Uh, yeah, you had about 12 seconds left. Bravo. Congratulations on top of that. I, I was going to have to pull Adam Silver and start and make sure you guys were off. But hey, good job. <laughs> All right, here we go, guys. We're going to our final segment of the day. Or, you know, it's Halloween, and I figured, you know what? Let's let's do something that's Halloween-themed, but based around the Eagles, the team that we cover. So, I'm going to start with you, Bob, and then little Caden. Bob, in the spirit of Halloween, we're focusing on the overtime question related to the Eagles. If you had to describe a current Eagles season, uh, Eagles season as a type of candy given out, this, this current Eagles season as a type of ca- candy that's been given out during trick-or-treating, what would it be and why? Oh, I'm going to just go with some, some recent, uh, so their most recent play, which is coming off the, their best game of the season in Cincinnati. Uh, let's describe them as a, as a Reese's peanut butter cup, because um, the peanut butter and the chocolate just went together perfectly on, on Sunday where the offense did exactly what you wanted them to do. And the defense did exactly what you want them to do. Complimentary football, they call it. And nothing's more complimentary than a, a, a Reese's chocolate and peanut butter peanut butter cup. It's the best candy there is. Uh, and it, it's the, the Eagles are coming off their best game. Uh, it hasn't been that way all along. But you know what? At, at five and two, and if the Eagles get to six and two this week, I, I, if you go back and look at the schedule, uh, at the start of the season, and, and you made your predictions, you they might not have got the six and two the way you, you wanted them to, but they it looks like they're going to get there. Uh, and I don't think anybody would complain about six and two when we when we looked at the start of the season as a, as their start. They'd be perfectly happy with that. So let's go with the Reese's peanut butter cup. Good, good. That's a good comparison. I like that, Caden. What Kate? What if you had to describe this current Eagles season as a candy given out during trick or treat? What would it be and why? Yeah, um, the one I think the one is it's not the, it's not necessarily the the best candy in the world, but Starburst. I know there's a thing where people when you like you freeze Starburst over time, they can last longer and it tastes better later after you eat them after you store it for a long time. And I think I'm saying Starburst because I think this Eagles team had a rough start to the season, uh, two and two. Uh, things looked ugly after four weeks and maybe people are overreacting a little bit, but now we're starting to see them get better week by week offensively. Um, they're starting to, they got all their fire pack firepower back. Uh, Kellen Moore is starting to add some new wrinkles to this offense and it's starting to get better. The young players on defense are starting with Cooper DeGene and Quinn Mitchell are starting to help elevate the defense. The linebacker player with Nicobe Dean and Zach Bonds getting better. The edge rushers are starting to play a little better. I think over time, this team is going to get better and better and better. And I think a Starburst works like that or any like f- dried candies that you can kind of freeze tastes a little better later on after you eat them. And I think the Eagles are going to continue to get better throughout the season. And uh, it might have not been as good at first, but it's going to get better over time. So I'll, I'll say a Starburst for the Eagles. That's a good comparison. I like that as well, too. I want to go with uh, uh, Sour Patch Kids. You know, first they're sour, then they're sweet. You know, as we look at the beginning of the season, it was like you mentioned, it was really rough to watch this year. It's wondering how does this team not get the most out of these players that you had on the roster? And then all of a sudden, you've seen what happens now when everything starts to gel together and you see these start to get comfortable with the system. So that's why I'll go with them. I'll, I'll go with that. And I think we'll uh, end it there. And guys, I want to thank you guys, Caden, Bob, I want to thank you guys very much for being on. Uh, I'll have a thing, that we'll actually have a new segment. I want to add to the rundown next week. So I hope you guys tune in to listen to what it is. I think we'll have fun with it. And uh, for Bob, oh, before we do that, make sure to read all of our stuff, nj.com slash Eagles. We'll have coverage of this upcoming game against the Jaguars. We'll also have coverage, as we mentioned before, coverage coming up for the upcoming trade deadline as well, too. So for Bob and Caden, I'm Chris. Everybody have a good one. See you.